Welcome to the Sharpshooters Wrestling Podcast. This is the Retro Raw Review with myself, Ross, and Manny is here. Yes, I am. <laughs> and we are joined again by Marcus, the grand finale. Yes, the vintage 90s edition. <laughs> you know, minus the homophobia and South Park dedication. <laughs> yeah. And OJ support. That's going as well for me. I believe yeah. my I believe my knees and back were um a okay <laughs> in the nineties and ninety eight we were all probably young kids and we were invincible. I'd like to think the young kids are invincible. Like I remember just falling down stairs and breaking, <laughs> just getting slammed places. Oh, no, no, no! I got my first. No I got pain. my first. I got my first concussion around this age. Really? <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, every kid knows you protect the head. You protect no, the no, head. No, 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 no. We were playing. We were playing wrestling on the grass, and I yeah, got we kicked. Well. I got kicked. Yep. I got kicked in the back of the head, and I, I just didn't see anything for a very long time. <laughs> I like to think I was the Cactus Jack in backyard wrestling as a kid. I could survive anything. I felt nothing. I felt nothing. I survived all types of stuff. I should be dead. I should be dead. I shouldn't be here today. I don't know what's going on. The other Jesus. kid, not so lucky. I am um, still here today. I just don't try at home kids things just didn't work, did they? Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh the stunner is amazing. The stunner <laughs> no, there's, is the greatest move ever. There's there's a scar here, but where is it? Here, where I broke my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to drop the macho man elbow on a kid <laughs> when I was five. And this is this is before um in playgrounds they had that soft kind of cushiony stuff. Oh yeah, to, this was concrete. To, to like break people's fall. Yeah, he moved. I smashed my small childlike elbow, not even really? fractured, shattered the elbow. Um, Damn. and I had my elbow like in plaster for like um, maybe what felt like nine months. Um, yeah. and then eventually, like, my it was in plaster for so long. Like, a, a film that came out around this time, Rookie of the Year, <laughs> when he had oh, his no. arm in plaster <laughs> and he was like that for time. Well, mine was just like normal, like that. But like um, uh, I couldn't bend my elbow for a very long time. So when they removed it from plaster, I would have to have it wasn't physio, but they put me against a giant protractor to see how far I could move my elbow. <laughs> but like yeah. even to this day now, I can't get like a full ninety degree bend on it anymore. Damn. Mm. You know, you got the worst of it. Like, you know how Spider-Man yeah. got pi- spider bites, he got the best of the superpowers and all that. And then Rookie of the Year, as you referenced, he got a 90 mile per hour fastball. <laughs> you got nothing but pain. Yeah. <laughs> Real life yeah. sucks. <laughs> I'm probably so home, kids. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so we begin this episode of Raw with uh, a recap of Austin and Tyson. Just in case you missed last week's Raw. Hold on. Uh, Tyson Austin. Tyson Austin. Tyson Austin. At, what point, Austin. at what point of Raw are we talking about? Because this happened all through the night. <laughs> yeah, this happened on, I think, three or four separate occasions. Where they, they replayed almost the entire segment. Um, Vince, Vince was also lying on Richie shit. All night, Mom. <laughs> all night. All all night. night. All he was getting night. his money's worth out of Tyson. <laughs> 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 all the exposure he could possibly get. That's probably um, true. Like he got him, and then you know how how he currently books Brock is like you know one segment a week. Yeah, and then he'll recap everything. It's kind of like I want people to know that Tyson is a part of the day to me, and that he's not on this week. But I'm going to throw him on in every single segment, every twenty minute, five minutes. Steve yeah. Austin and uh, Tyson, and I'll throw every sponsor attached to it. Western <laughs> Union, one hundred collect. <laughs> <laughs> what are the people in the like actual audience doing when all these video packages is being played? They watch it. They, they, watch they, it. they, they, they beamed out on the big Titan Tron. Yeah. Uh, right. Yep. The Titan. Ty- uh, 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 I is as watching this. I miss the giant Titan Tron. I hate what we have <laughs> currently. It's too small. This one is oversized. <laughs> and it's amazing how big that's the Titan Tron was, and I miss it. And I would enjoy watching that. Than you know what we get currently when you go to live events of just watching Becky Lynch and Charlotte just hang out in the ring for like an hour <laughs> as they show a million clips on a smaller screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some things were better in the past. And my first match of the night is uh, Mark Henry with the Nation of Domination taking on Ken and Ahmed and the DOA. It is just a singles match, Ken versus Mark, but there's like 10 lads at the ringside. <laughs> it inevitably breaks down. Um, we get three minutes of wrestling before The Rock just decides, nah, fuck this, I'm getting in the ring and we'll start taking it on Ken Shamrock. So I turn away for maybe like a minute whilst this is on <laughs> and then I, I turn back and I thought 
it was a lumberjack match <laughs> with the amount of people that were ringside. Clearly, it wasn't. It took forever. <laughs> This was clearly uh, a gang war on a break of happening, and the referee should have known this right away and threw everybody out because yeah. we've got this for multiple weeks from when I saw that this just falls apart real quick. Whether it's yeah. been a six man or a singles matches, the DOA and the nation and Kid Sherrock and fat ass Ahmed Johnson always seem <laughs> to get the ring. And in this one, I thought. Mark Henry looked good for the three minutes. He did a bunch of bear hugs, which I hated as a kid. Jesus <laughs> Christ, yeah. Come on, Mark. But Do I love the bear hug as an adult. I don't know why. I was like, oh, yeah, he's slowing it down. I agree, JR. He's slowing it down. Kid Sherrock yeah. would have effed him up if they kept it standing up. And <laughs> he did. That. And then when he got belly to belly by uh, Sherrock, the rock had to jump in because he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mind can't equate this Mark Henry with Hall of Fame Mark Henry. They're two separate people in my head. Yeah. This guy is so bad. No, because when, when he was unfortunately named the Silverback, yeah. he was he was he was uh he was he was actually destructive. Like he came yep. out dipped, he was wet, he came in, in his swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> but like but like you can't I can't separate this young mark and then sexual no. chocolate mark to the the guy that we know that was dipped, and I can't, and he's called, and that guy that was dipped is completely different to the guy that now goes. It's Nile time for the main <laughs> yeah. event. I feel like he's closer at this stage at the young Mark Henry to the AEW Mark Henry we get that smiling and close yeah. to the main event because he was fake angry during this match. Like it wasn't that visceral anger of like I still got stuff left in the tank. Yeah. Who are you talking to yelling at kids and stuff at ringside? Just being a, a monster. And just being upset that his hairline was gone at that time. That's what, goes, that's what happened. You get angry and angry as your hairline pulls back. I know that was for me. But, He's furious uh, now on a podcast right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what yeah, you mean. So we'll, never, we'll never get sponsored by Just For Men. Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe we will. And we'll all pop up with just massive heads of hair. Yeah, I can't wait to come in with hair one day. We're gonna get the spray. We're gonna get Rogaine. We're gonna no, get some no, 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 no. You, if people start following the Twitter and just sharing all the shit we do, and we get that sponsorship stuff, I'm getting plugs, man. I'm getting hair plugs. <laughs> how, did you spend, I... how, how did you spend your money? I got hair plugs. I got them from Turkey. <laughs> well, my, my other Indian podcast hair. is um, my other podcast is sponsored by um, uh, Manscaped. So I'm kind of stuck between the two worlds. Do I let it grow? Oh, do I shave right. it all off? What am I gonna do? Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shave it off and then grow it back. <laughs> let it keep growing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the vein of when if I ever got real money, I uh, as fuck you money, I wear the toupee everywhere just for fun, <laughs> just, for fun just so people can know it's a toupee. Be a bad one. Yeah, it'd be a bad one, and I want people to know it's a toupee, but never tell me how bad it is. I want on... inside. I'm gonna be oh, laughing yeah. so hard. I know we've derailed, but I kind of want you to go with the the two pairs of like white people hair, not um, yes. Afro hair. <laughs> just party. like, just like, and then have a full like party and shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. Days is combed over too. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Nineteen nineties David Beckham curtains. Yeah, so very politician. Oh, no, perfect. White they people. They need to hair. come back. The Backstreet Boys, yeah. Nick Carter curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I want frosted tips. I want frosted tips. Yeah. Anyway, this show was a look back in the day. Yeah, back in I know, I, I know yeah. how we get ourselves back because at yeah. some point there's a Takamishinoku promo package. <laughs> and he, if there was ever a 90s Asian kid thing to do, it was <laughs> have the copper fringe yeah. <laughs> which Takamishinoku sported. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this match uh, all breaks down, it's obviously a DQ finish. Um, we get never, never before seen footage of a casket getting opened and it being empty i don't yeah. they thought this was really thrilling i i, I was captivated because there was exclusive footage because they brought up how the undertaker wasn't in there and i was like bullshit he was in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was in there paul bearer told me last week how they murdered how they murdered yeah. the undertaker, <laughs> yeah. and he was so happy about it <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but when they opened it up, and uh, I was like, oh, it probably smells in there. It's a dead man. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was eviscerated. Uh, we cut from that lovely segment to uh, the NWA 
I'm the tag team. So. <laughs> yes. My Jarrett. favorite segments of the week are the yes. NWA. <laughs> this went the longest. This is the longest match of the night at five minutes and four seconds. Um, <laughs> so I mean, they, they're getting some time at least. But it wasn't a bad tag match, to be fair. It was fine. The rest of it was fine. It was just, I don't give a shit about the NWA. <laughs> no, I enjoy the segment because I think it's funny. But what happens is, whatever volume you have your TV on, oh, or shit, whatever yeah. you're listening to yep. this on, you need to turn it down because Jim <laughs> Cornette is just full on shouting through the whole entire thing. You can't tell me about no motherfucker. You can't tell me this is what pro wrestling is all about. Like Jesus Christ, man! I always man. watch the network with the the captions on just for fun because it's awful and it it cannot make out half of what Cornet is saying. It just says inaudible so many times. <laughs> I mean, it's just loud, and he's like at a fifteen when he needs to be at like a five. Yeah. <laughs> Read the room, Jim. On it. But the NWA is my favorite segment because I know it never takes off. I know. <laughs> Yeah, all this work for absolutely nothing. <laughs> so much time on this show <laughs> to what's going on with the resurgence and revival of the NWA, and nothing <laughs> ever comes of this. Yeah, this is dropped nothing. from WrestleMania. No one becomes a star out of this. Like <laughs> everybody goes their separate ways. I guess this is the biggest push Jeff Jarrett had at the time. <laughs> yeah, Jarrett's back to like, being the singer Jarrett by WrestleMania time. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, I, thought, I thought that gimmick just went and then he fizzled out and then he became um, Sil- Silver Trunks. <laughs> I think he has another little run with the guitar, I think, before he yeah. disappears to being the leader of the NWA or NWA. Yeah, cause sorry, because he, he brings the guitar back yeah. before he becomes Silver Trunks or something like that. And, <laughs> you know, this match pissed me off there. though. Legion of Doom, I hate the Legion of Doom. The, no selling, <laughs> absolutely everything, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's what their mo was back in the day. I was selling for them and doing this. Well, Animal this got hit with that... a really big uh, pile driver, and then hits a hit on the back with a loaded tennis racket, and then kicks out on the three. So it kind of, you're not sure if it was supposed to be a three count or not. Just no, but that's apparently in. that's about, some people apparently did that. So like I was, I can't remember who, what podcast or uh, it, it may have been the Austin. Austin uh, show on the, the network yeah. where they talked about how JBL Mick Foley would always like kick out at four. Like right. if you were to count to four or five, they yeah. would kick out at four to make you give off the impression that there was always something left in the tank. Ah, uh, right. Now this yeah. was full on Hogan at WrestleMania. This is like I'm not. <laughs> like, you've only just beaten me. Well, in this one, I the journalist that I am in wrestling, <laughs> I wanted to go, was that a botch or not? So I rewinded yeah. it and I saw him kick out at three. He made it at three, before yeah. the three. And when they cut back to Hawk going to Animal, he go, he tells him, you just did a job? And yeah. Animal's like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going like, oh shit, maybe that wasn't supposed to be three. <laughs> Maybe I don't think it was because NWO looks so happy to get a win. That's their first win, I think, because uh, a, a collective yeah. back in the WWF. <laughs> what the Legion do? They were so bad. There was that. There was a clothesline. And I think it's this match because I think they wrestled uh, once or something. But it was Hawk or Animal, or I think it was Hawk waiting for somebody to turn around on the clothesline. Just couldn't wait anymore. They just did it. Just yeah. jumped at it. Yeah, just Hit did him. it. The guy's like, "What the fuck was that?" And he's like, "Oh." <laughs> Yeah, oh, I've man. never really got the, the Legion of Doom, and just the more I see it, the more I hate them. No, you guys are <laughs> ruining my childhood. I love the Legion of Doom, and the more I watch them now, and I'm sure I just got to go back and watch them in WCW. It's the Road Warriors I love. Are, are you are you gonna coin are you gonna coin your line again? I was a child, I was, Vince. I, I was a child, Vince. I was a child. I was, I was a child, Vince. So <laughs> easily impressible. I was just like that crowd. <laughs> Whenever I heard, I want to run. I'm like, yeah, duh. I literally went looking for my shoulder pads and spikes as a 38, 37 year old man looking like, yes, the Legion of Doom is coming out again, even though I know what's going to happen. Wait, wait. Did you have those, or did you have the child ones, which were like made out of foam and then yeah. sticking up? Because I used to see that, okay. and then like there okay. wasn't a European shop at that point, so no. I was always like, I want this, but I was like, my mom, my mom and dad weren't gonna like have this imported for, from America. Right. Dollars so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a lesson in poor kid. <laughs> we couldn't afford any of that. So when the Legion of Doom, for my support of the Legion of Doom, I would literally one put pillows. Oh my 
<laughs> and walk around like yeah 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 and then at, at at a good point when i had my wrestling buddy it made it easier because you have to hook it or so i would put the wrestling buddy and i would stretch out all my shirt but mom would be pissed <laughs> and i'd be like duh, 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 duh. <laughs> lovely to do yeah, as a parent, I can understand. I tell my daughter all the time for stretching her clothes. For fuck's sake, it costs money. Stop stretching them <laughs> yeah, out. It costs money. It's good money. <laughs> but you know, being poor, our parents are like you fuck that up. You that's what you are. That's who you gonna be. <laughs> that's, that's what a, you that's are. A, yeah, you're gonna be the kid with the stretchy clothes. Enjoy it. You're gonna be an outcast. <laughs> you're not gonna understand why. <laughs> uh, well, we get to see Legion of Doom at WrestleMania 14, but we get to see Legion of Doom 2000 with Sonny as their manager. And... I can't wait. I don't yeah. know why I keep assu- assuming LOD 2000 was the one with draws. <laughs> no. Well, no, it, it's a little post. It's a little bit after, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it's no, a little it's bit Animal after because Hawk, Hawk was all drugged up and Falling stuff. off Titan Trons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Pushed off Titan Trons. <laughs> and by the way, that's coming up as well. Yes. Yeah. By the way, Hawk's still supporting that half Mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like that he's leaning into this. Just like he could, he could literally just shave the other one and let them yeah. grow together at the same time. But he's like, no, I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, he's literally shaving that one side to keep it nice and short. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> and up next, we see uh, Triple H getting naked. No reason why. Just taking his pants down while uh, China and Sean put some belts to cover his junk. Yep. I don't really know what the point of that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's the X. It has to be about the genitals well, or nudity. Yeah, true. And, uh, push the envelope. It's for yeah. the ratings. Push the envelope. <laughs> then we cut back to a really long DX backstage segment. Uh, Sean Unnecessary to backstage segment. It went on for segment. so long, didn't it? <laughs> Sean really beating around the bush that he wants to be the referee <laughs> and not want to fight Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> and then taping up Triple H's knee. And I was like, Man, this is going on a long time. I really hope that the people are tuned into this because I was like, this is a wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, this was like a quarter of the first hour of Raw, this segment. Yes. Because we yep. get one more match and then we're into the war zone. That's literally like the, the four things have happened and the first hour is finished. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we get another recap of Tyson, Tyson Austin. Austin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 90% of the first hour is Tyson Austin DX. <laughs> yeah. DWA, we give you five minutes. <laughs> Uh, we got our next match, our last match of the uh, Raw. Uh, we take we got Kafka, Kafka Goldust, who's dressed as Vader this week, looking quite good actually. His face paint was amazing. I'm yeah, not gonna, I, I'm, I'm just going to say Luna Vachon was looking. Sp- I, I, I'm not going to say oh. it now, but I, I'm going to say I would have oh. I would have got down with that freak. <laughs> Luna's so underrated. Yeah, so underrated. Uh, born in the wrong era of wrestling, if it had a face, it's Luna yeah. Vachon because yeah. she would have fit perfect in modern, it, maybe even the two thousands, even mm-hmm. the two thousands, she would have fit right there as a colorful character who would have been out there in the Divas division having least solid match. She would have been a solid yeah. version of Victoria that the WWE had, or even in the modern area, she would, you know, she flourish. But yeah, she's just in this wrong era where her women are only sable. Yes, basically, yeah. yeah. Say more than everyone else is true of one person. Sunny too, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a sunny. I'm pro sunny, but you know, drugs, racism, and everything else. At least in the future of that, yeah. You just which is like, ah. which, which puts me in a tough predicament because I can't really use her in a thumbnail. <laughs> I have the best separate people. She looks like two different people today, anyway. Yeah, she is a separate person. We can we can kind of separate the two. Like Mark Henry, we've got now Sonny and we've got then Sonny. No, nah, separate got, the two. No, nah, no. Nah, once you get racist tag attached to you, all, yeah, all facets <laughs> of sticks. you are fixed. <laughs> I don't know that that new two K twenty two NWA game has the biggest racism of them all on the cover. <laughs> yeah, but Mark, there's a reason they kept that as a digital edition where you can't have a hard copy. Is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Probably display in that box. A lot of people do that. Um, Vader gets called a Kodiak. Me. Vader's a Kodiak bear this week, not a big stinky grizzly bear. So they're just yeah, they're really through the bear family. It. They're just trying to sell this bear thing. Like, so <laughs> this is the version of Keith Lee that Vince is always <laughs> wanted. He's like, I want you to be a bear. But we had a big stinky bear of a Kodak bear back in the day. And only Vince remembers this shit, probably. Yeah. Like, Vader was the Kodak bear. So we can't call Keith Lee the Kodak bear. <laughs> so you're the bear cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's all Vader is. And Vader is so over. People love Vader. <laughs> yep. He comes out, he looks like he's having a great time. He's doing a little oh, man, jig that was down the to the first, ring. I believe he's the first person I see ever 
that I can recall that does both sides of the ramp. Yeah, yeah. he went on edge. edge. On edge, washes on. Yeah. On this day, that's where Edge got it from. <laughs> He's like, I always wanted to be Vader, but you know, here's the crazy thing about Vader: I never remembered him being a face, and this is no. him being a face. Like for some reason, it never clicked to me. Even back then, I guess that Vader was a face. But well, I, I knew he became a face. He was on Boy Meets World. He was on Boy Meets World. <laughs> My memory of Vader is him Vader bombing Gorilla Monsoon and then getting suspended. Yeah, just him being a monster or him in Kuwait attacking a guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not real, huh? It's the international incident. Not real. <laughs> bah. Ooh, bah. <laughs> Vader just decked the dude. Leon, yeah. calm down. Well, First wrestler actually... I learned their real name. Leon. Yeah. He was the Leon first because of that Kuwait thing. Yeah. Uh, in the match, he fucks up gold dust in three minutes, um, and then the lights go out, and here comes Kane and Paul Bearer, and Kane and Vader get into it. Um, I love how Vader just stands up to him and doesn't back down at yeah. all. <laughs> Punches the crap out of him as well. He got him good. In, he did. in the yeah. dark, he got Kane good till he got distracted. <laughs> till till gold dust had to come back in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Did you see he hit Kane with a, a power driver and then Vader actually checks on him to make sure he hadn't like killed him? Like he's checking so he's making sure he's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Kane but was it this episode? Kane two stones uh oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same yeah. thing. He two yeah. stones Kane. And yeah. it's like, oh shit, I may have killed Kane. Fuck, I'm going to give it. <laughs> and you see the niceness of Vader, and it's like, oh shit. Yeah, shit. And then <laughs> Kane goes, motherfucker. And I go, oh yeah. fuck. And you see Vader like, oh man, I thought we were brothers. <laughs> nah, he struggled though. Kane did struggle to get him up. That's a, yeah. that's a lot of man. That's a lot of man. I mean, Kane's a, Kane's a big boy, but Vader is a, yeah, he's a bigger boy. He's a mastodon. He's got a lot of weight to him, yeah. He's a Kodak bear. <laughs> so, Kay should always brag about, I I gave a tombstone to a Kodak Coach bear one time. <laughs> that should be his next broadcast. That should be his, his tagline for his next party run. Yeah, the bear they call <laughs> Vader. Uh, we cut backstage to see Foley and Funk sitting in the ring, having a little chat about their multiple <laughs> personalities. Was Foley only helping put out the ring? He had a big wrench in his hand. What was he doing? Yeah, I don't know what was happening here. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was just, he was just there. He was just there looking for weapons. <laughs> <laughs> what was this candid scouting. moment that they had? Like, we're just going to sit in the ring and have a conversation. The ring crew going, can these dudes get the fuck out? We <laughs> really got to go. I don't know. <laughs> I want to guys... go home. I want to go home. You're delaying shit. He's got my wrench. How do I ask him for my wrench? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Mr. Foley, Mr. Cactus Jack Man, and Mr. Chainsaw Tally Funk. Please. Can you guys get the fuck out of here? We I don't know that they were talking about doing moonsaults. I'm just like, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, how old are you? Oh, that dude crazy. How old is he? Oh, he's 86. And Fo- that, that Cactus Jack got a fat ass. And I was like, what is this conversation? <laughs> I don't know why they thought they put us on Raw. That's some time to fill. Uh, but that is the end of the first hour. We enter the war, the war zone now. Uh, Lawler's here on commentary, as he usually is for the second hour. Joins Jim Ross. Uh, after another Austin Tyson recap, we get the Outlaws taking on Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie. This wasn't for the belts, was it? This was just a tag match. I think it was just a tag match, yeah. which I yeah. thought was a no DQ match at one point. Yes, yeah, because I, the referee I just thought, do we want? Yeah, yeah dog, y'all do what you want. But I believe it ended in DQ, right? It ended in DQ. But like, <laughs> I, I, would, I, I was confused. Because I thought it would have ended when um, he literally threw the chair <laughs> and then in the ring and it landed on Billy Gunn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went, oh, that's DQ. But nope, no. Yeah. Let it go. Nope, carry on. <laughs> carry on. Rick Foley jumped off the side of April with a chair. Oh, carry on. I didn't yeah, realize uh, how... Going back to this, this feud was heated. I don't know why they wanted to yeah. kill each other so much. I don't even know what the origins of the start of this feud is because I guess I'm late to this show. You guys may have more uh, introduction, but it just seems like they just want to kill each other. It's no, no, no. I think I think they wanted to kill each other the moment the moment Chainsaw Charlie appeared for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that's, that's 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 my jumping in point. It was like. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, our first episode of this was Chainsaw Charlie cut himself out of box, wasn't it? After yeah, was taking on McFarlane. Yeah, but that, that, I think if you introduce a chainsaw <laughs> to any type of conversation, it does escalate yeah. things right away. Yeah, it like, oh, that, that's what this is about. This is what this is about. <laughs> You're gonna cut my ass up. I'm gonna <laughs> kill you first. <laughs> kind of like in modern day when did was. Drew McIntyre swinging a sword at some guy. If Ginger would have brought out a gun the next week, it's been justified. <laughs> 
Hmm. You come at me with a sword, I come at you with a gun. You hear me? <laughs> a sword to a gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, ref, the ref finally has enough after five minutes and just DQs uh, Cactus and Charlie. Um, but that doesn't stop the match. It just carries on. Uh, the mandible claw to the referee. Uh, Chainsaw lays loads of chairs on top of Road Dog and then gives him a moonsault. It's like, are we watching ECW all of a sudden? Like, what's going on? I'm not going to be funny, but that was badass. If you think about how old he must have been, he had to be at yeah. least... I want to say 50 at that point. <laughs> I believe in their sit-down conversation, he said he was 56 or 60. Shit. That's an old he's man. He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's crazy. 78 now. So, yeah, he must have been yeah, 60 odd. Just before. Don't do that, Terry. You're too old. <laughs> <laughs> he's already done it. It's nothing we can do. This right. I'm sure Terry Funk is wrestling somewhere right now. Yeah, almost certainly, yeah. He's probably wrestling Ultimo Dragon for one of those titles. <laughs> we should do an Ultimo Dragon title counter every week just to be like, oh, he's currently at his 28th title. He just won the, uh, the uh, Langston <laughs> Virginia Intercontinental Championship. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, Ultimo Dragon. That's what he does. Uh, this is where we get the Taka Michinoku video package. Strange, yes. but not, not out of... I like it. I'm not against it. It was good. Was good. <laughs> it was, was it really was Vince good. Going, I'm really going to try to do something with this. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to give him a package, guys. Until We're we get to Mania and he forgets about it all of us, all over again. Do we have any <laughs> weights? No, we don't. we don't. I just can't wait for the time he 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 merges with Funaki. I just can't <sighs> wait for it. Just great um, times coming. Oh yeah, we're gonna yeah, get okay. client tie and choppy choppy. Yeah, I. I think that, was, that, be on I think that might be ninety nine, but I can't wait for it. We can carry I on need we to that. be on that show. I need to be on Choppy <laughs> Choppy PP. That is my favorite ending to any television show. <laughs> Not wrestling. Television show ever. Because I was like, oh my God, they chopped his dick off. That's how <laughs> wrong. I knew what was going on in wrestling. I knew I was on up and up. I knew it was fake. But the ending to that show had me. I have to know what happened to Val Venus' penis. Yeah. <laughs> I have to know they cut that shit off. <laughs> Uh, we get a match between Brian Christopher and Pantera. We got um, Honky Tonk Man is a special guest. Wait, wait, wait. Is it yeah. Pantera or El Pantera? Because because Honky Tonk Man <laughs> kept calling him El Pantera. Honky Tonk Man, big was... old racist. Yeah, I don't think he was El Pantera. I think he was just Pantera. He wasn't the Panther. <laughs> he was just Pantera. That's my name. Don't ruin it. So, oh, uh, this was racist and uh, what was the uh, nepotism? And yes. I loved it. I'm doing yeah. the nepotism. I'm just faking that they're not related. Jr. Jr. was having the time of his life with this this match, wasn't he? <laughs> Just loves winding Laura off about Brian Christopher being his son. <laughs> right. On a scale of one to ten, if this was happening in the modern day wrestling landscape, how offended do you think the wrestling community be that Brian Christopher lost to Pantera or slash El Pantera in his <laughs> debut match? <laughs> I think, I, think be, I think they'll be furious because El Pantera would probably be like this um, incredible, like uh, indie indie darling. Like, oh yeah. no! How dare they? How dare they kill Pantera and, and then call him El Pantera? How dare they? <laughs> they changed his name. They called him El Pantera. He's <laughs> Rey Mysterio. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a really, really good match. The, the cruise missed... couldn't just go. Sorry, Ross, you missed the good one. You could have just called him Pentagon. <laughs> you could have just gone with Penta <laughs> for that joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, yeah really good match. This proper good, proper good cruiserweight action back and forth. Um, I like the finish of it as well. And uh, I also like the after match stuff with Lawler because he said before the match that he would shake the winner's hand. Uh, so he shakes Pantera's hand and then punches him, knocks him out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. As Lawler said, I would have did that no matter who would have won. And I believe him. Yeah. <laughs> I believe him. <laughs> that relationship with him and Brian Christopher wasn't always well. So <laughs> I believe he would have punched his son on TV. <laughs> uh, we cut to the back and we hear from Chainsaw Charlie and Chactus Jack again. Um, just after this, as soon as they start speaking, you know, DX come over, uh, start talking to them, distract them, and the outlaws come on and kind of wrap them up and just the shit other than with DX. I love when yeah. a good plan comes together. <laughs> yeah, this is a good plan. <laughs> I is know this... they hit... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, is this kind of when the Outlaws become part of DX? But it's not, is it? It's got away to a mania. 
No, I, yeah, yeah it, it's after Mania because they don't really acknowledge him till um, Sean leaves. They're not part of Sean's yeah. DX, are they? Yeah, no, no, they're a part of Hunter's DX. They're just gang affiliated at this point, and I always yeah. liked that that they were. I always like as a kid, I was like, they should just be a part of this crew. They they work yeah. so well together, <laughs> and I enjoyed this attack because it was the closest thing to a netting I can get. In my yeah. life. <laughs> 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 like, like <laughs> and they got over, and they were like, "Ah," and I was like, "Oh, this is great. This is a good plan. Well done." But yeah. it's great. This this type this this is where just bad guys just used to just hang out with bad guys, which was just the good. The best part about it, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, even, the bad guy locker room, you had a good guy locker room. Even when you go back to like a few weeks ago, when it was like where Austin was a Mark man going into the Rumble, you still had the Los Bariquas and the Nation working together to beat him up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good storytelling. Well, here, here's um, my question: the uh, Cactus Jack. I don't remember this one. I just watched it like you know the other night or last night or whatever. What happened to Michael Cole in this segment? How did he not get under that cage? When did he decide, I'm getting out of here? He just bounced. I did not see him bounced. leave, but I was like, fuck, they got Michael Cole. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, not my business. Yeah, Michael Cole's an elusive there. man. He's been a war reporter. He knows how to get out of places quick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a joke that I want to talk about on, later. <laughs> right. <okay. laughs> uh, we got back to the ring. We get the headbangers versus the Quirkers. It's Three minutes, no one. Once cares. again, I don't get the Quebecers' music. Not <laughs> even when they do their nasty and walk out. They don't get. They don't even get their music played as they walk out. Two this matches, is ridiculous. yeah. Two this matches, two weeks in a row. Not a single hint of that music happening. Gonna, ne- ne- if I don't get an, uh, another, another gone. time, another time if they don't come out, I'm playing it on the show. I don't even care if we get copyright strike. We won't see them again. I don't <laughs> I, don't, I think this might be the last time we see the Quebecers. They, everything about them seems like they're part time. Like they're just here. It's like, oh, you guys are going to be in uh, wherever they're at, DC too. Come yeah. join us. Come yeah. in Texas. All right, come join us. It's gonna feel five minutes of our show. Not even oh, five, three minutes be, of our show. You're not gonna be in California. You're not gonna be in uh, Alberta. No, we're not. You guys are from Canada. Yeah, we're just not gonna be there. All right, that's the that's the end of the Quebecers, guys. We're never using them again. Um, we get our kind of main event match of the evening for the European title. It's uh, Triple H uh, versus Owen Hart. Obviously, we don't see Triple H. We see Gold Dust. He's out of dress as Triple H. What? They really, did, they really did him dirty with that nose. <laughs> I thought I thought it was Triple H. The nose was identical. That nose was huge. <laughs> I want to ask. I, I know it's an obscure question you could ask wrestlers. I want to say, hey, we've got an interview with Gold Dust today. And be like, hey, Dustin, I have a question. How hmm. difficult was it to wrestle with that nose? Like, I feel like you couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to probably balance that wig in your hair because that wasn't the best wig. Like, I want to give well, you credit. Well, he removed it. Well, he did yeah, remove he, it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like, it just I seemed like it. it was a lot to wrestle in. I don't think that was very far off his Sable costume either. <laughs> no, not massively. <laughs> or his Marilyn Benson costume in later weeks. <laughs> same costume, same wig, different colors. And we had Luna dressed as China as well, just to complete the set. Yeah, Luna stuff. did a good China. She did a good China. Yeah, like I was like, oh, that's a nice mini China. Reminded me of uh, with the um, what was Jerry Lawler's girlfriend who was like fourteen. The cat. The cat, oh, the cat. Yeah. <laughs> was dressed up in China. It's mini China. Uh, but I, I appreciate, you know, Go does do a double duty and having a really solid match with Owen Hart. Like, I was like, oh. And I was really upset. I was like, they put the European title graphic up there. They held yeah. the title up. It is the authentic European championship <laughs> out there. This is a person being an interim champion for you, Triple H, a surrogate. Therefore, yeah. you should lose. And then when, you know, Slaughter came out, I was like, Oh, justice. Yeah. <laughs> can Slaughter can Slaughter do that? Can he just give a belt to someone else? Yeah, if, if you say you're you're doing it as proxy, <laughs> well, I, suppose, I guess yeah. you could. Yeah. yeah, they did everything legit. Like we went through the we went through the legit motions. <laughs> I'm sure Triple H was in the backside of a European Championship title match. I don't know why he thought this was gonna work. <laughs> No, it's either they the have the match or the rap threw it out as a DQ. He had to yeah. throw it out as a DQ or have the jump. <laughs> uh, yeah, Owen wins with the, the sharp shoe, gets to tap out. Um, DX thought it was, it was funny, had a good laugh, and then Slaughter came out and reversed the decision and gave Owen the belt. I mean, that's how Owen wins 
the European title. Triple H suddenly becoming like Sean and not just not losing belts clean, just going to give them away to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bryce Sean, Bryce Bisel, you're not going to get pinned by him. <laughs> you're not getting pinned. You're my guy. My guys don't get pinned. We don't do jobs. <laughs> we got to figure what, out a way. Guess what we get next? Tyson uh, and Austin. Tyson <laughs> and Austin. Yep. Tyson and Austin. This For the fourth time, time in the show. In 4K digital. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. This one was shot on film. <laughs> like, what? Uh, let me get a uh, another thing from Don King, who says uh, Tyson can't actually fight Austin because he's not been cleared by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Um, but March, I... March 29, March WrestleMania, me, Vince McMahon, Don King, we gotta do, we gotta come together. And March 29, WrestleMania. <laughs> this man did not know what you're talking about. <laughs> Why can't him and Vince say March 29th? Why do they say 29? It's not the 29. It's not the 29 of March, is it? It's the 29th. It's 29. It's 29. March 29. We will be there. And it's going to be an extravaganza where Mike Tyson and Stone Cold Steve Austin have to get it on. Yeah. Call, call your hand. local cable providers. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Don King's alive today still doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Who is he bro- I haven't heard it, heard about him for a very long time. Just the fact that Tyson boxes. didn't kill him when he took all of Tyson's money like underhandedly is uh, amazing. Yeah, that shows the power of really Don King right there. Yeah. <laughs> there's Don there's, there's a mystery going on. He should be dead. Ninety he years old. Have us with, yeah, he's ninety. Ninety. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Considering the drugs and the people he's cheated over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Like you would think that man is gone. Like he is gone, gone. But nope. Um, I did like his office. I like that. You know that he was selling the show. It's and... a very rich man's office. It's a tr- it's but a Trump I... Vince office, isn't it? Yeah, but I do question the Nevada Commission's reach <laughs> over the entire United States and world, where Mike Tyson cannot compete anywhere. Yeah, in, like, in another oh, sport. Wasn't yeah, WrestleMania no fourteen sport. in Boston too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Quite so away from was, Nevada. They could have did it anywhere. Nevada has no control over any of this. <laughs> he could have fought anywhere in the world if he wanted to and doing a different job. The man has a right to make a living. <laughs> yeah. uh, we cut from that. We get Austin in the ring. Austin's pissed off. Um, he says he's going to knock uh, Tyson's gold tooth out and make it a necklace. I like that. Brilliant line. <laughs> yep. Comma, very comma, the supreme fighting machine. <laughs> yes. Uh, he dares Tyson to show up at No Way Out in Houston, Texas on February the 15th. And uh, if he does show up, he'll knock his ass out. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Hey, there I respect go. that. That was it. That was that. That's, you know what? I appreciate everything Steve Austin had to say. And, you know, when you see Steve Austin, and I look at every current wrestler today, and I mean every single one, whether you're talking about your Omegas, your uh, Roman, or Cody's, or whoever, yeah, you see Steve Austin, that dude just blows up a star power. That's a main event worthy man, just to say what he had to say, and the show just ends like that. Yeah, I was like, fuck, that was boss level, god level promo ability, and it's just star power. Because it's no something I didn't either. appreciate back in the day, but the star power of him is just incredible. It's incredible to watch. Yeah, it's just like wow, like like he just carries himself in a way where you just go like, no one carries himself like this. Yeah, how can you be that confident? Thing is, it's yeah. easier. It was easier then though, because like, look, look now where you have to live a social life, social media mm. life as well, and then you've got to put you all this stuff to. on it, and then and then you don't have to. If, if you look at a lot of the a lot of the performers now, you can very much see a divide between their character and them. Yeah. Whereas, like now, mm-hmm. before it was very much protected. Like you wouldn't see Stone Cold doing what he, Stone Cold does now, where, where where you may see him with a glass of wine. No, you would never see that. That's what I'm DDP. Yeah. Just doing yoga, smoking weed, <laughs> like just chilling <laughs> with DDP. You would never catch that dude on an off day. No. Yeah, like this, he just comes out there, and it's just like, like he's not. What I like is that he's not joking. He's not mm. talking about inside stuff. Like yeah. Sean is doing, more people gravitated to what Sean and DX was doing instead of what Austin's doing, which is straight up 
everything's legit. I yeah. will beat the shit out of you, uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> if you show I am the baddest me. man on the planet, not you, Tyson. Yeah. Simple as hey, that. Yeah, you just feel it. And I'm here to ruin Vince's day and any business <laughs> obligations. I don't care. I will kill anybody in Don King, too. It must yeah. happen. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yep. Um, there we go. That's the end of that episode of Raw. Um, Manny, your MVP for the show. Um, Tyson and Austin. Tyson Austin <laughs> and Don King. Because Don King, March 29, <laughs> WrestleMania, Vince McMahon <laughs> coming together. <laughs> That's got to be on YouTube. Can you kind of splice that into this episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to put Manny's version. On, uh, yeah. when they cut the I feel like I, I feel like I did a good peacock. impression. I feel like I did yeah. a good impression of Don yeah. King. I, I want to put you on Peacock over Don King. <laughs> <laughs> when we cut the Don Kings off, it's just Manny going March twenty nine. <laughs> Austin and Tyson, they must fight. They must fight. And we just cut to that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with that. I believe it. That's what Don King was like back then. Yeah. Yeah. Guess his point <laughs> over. Art Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> um, Marcus, your um, MVP for the show? Oh, I'm well with the Kodak Bear. The man they call Vader. Nice. Just being just a prep of fashion. I don't know what it is, but he brings so much joy to me in yeah. watching. And it's like, you know, has the LOD I get all this nostalgia of how much I loved him, and then they continue to disappoint. Every time I do Vader, I'm like, I really wish I appreciated Vader more. I really like yeah. Vader. <laughs> uh, my MVP is Goldust. Double duty on an episode of Raw, isn't it? Ross, you can't, you can't call that double duty because at one point, one what? was three minutes and the other was maybe about five. <laughs> yeah, he did about eight minutes in total, but <laughs> he spent more time in makeup. <laughs> He's still putting a lot of work. I appreciate the man this week. He did put he, he put a lot of work in, more than anyone else is doing though, in, <laughs> ring, in ring wise. Um, your match of the night. There's a few to choose from, I think, this week. Decent, I'm, decent do you know what? I'm going to go with the whole of Gold Dust Vader because because Vader taking it to Kane. You, no one's seen that, but yeah, no yeah. one has seen that. <laughs> no one's stood up for the man yet. Yeah, he caught his fade quick. Vader's like, I don't care. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going with uh, Two Sexy versus Pantera. I don't know why. I just I really enjoyed watching that match. El Pantera. El Pantera. <laughs> it may just be Pantera. <laughs> I'm the, graphics say, said, the graphics said Pantera, but yeah. I'm saying El Pantera. Because I believe what the Honky Tonk Man said. You, you side with the racist. <laughs> He's the Honky Tonk Man. Gotta believe the it. Honky Man. <laughs> I'm good. I'm bad. I'm, yeah. You know, whatever. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, your favorite match of the night? I agree with you, Ross. It's the El, it's El Pantera. I don't know if he's El Pantera, El Pantera and I don't want to disrespect the man. But Brian Christopher, that whole segment had a very consistent storyline and a solid match to go with it. Yeah. And the King and Honky Talk Man trying to put over their nephew, cousin, whatever, son, <laughs> whatever we are in relationship to family. Uh, I appreciate it. There we go. That is this episode of Raw in the can. Manny, do you want to do the social stuff or are you going to do it after? They are right here with the new. I added oh. even the Sharpies network to the side. <laughs> Look at that. With Ross. Sharpies like trapeze. As, as I've said, <laughs> and I've said on numerous shows now, retweet our shit. If you're not yeah. going to donate to the show, retweet all our shit. <laughs> well, you know, if you don't call it shit, maybe they'll repeat it, Manny. <laughs> they don't do anything. They don't buy any of our stuff. If, if they're not going to pay anything for us, they might as well do the free option and help us. Yeah, we just <laughs> shit, retweeting shit sales. Like, I went to the bathroom, took a shit, took a picture, and was like, hey, someone retweet this. <laughs> retweet this. Probably blow up on Twitter, to be fair. The amount of stuff that goes on there. <laughs> Why is there shit on Twitter? <laughs> so yes follow us like us subscribe to us uh, leave comments on our videos do all of that stuff it's good stuff uh, we will be back next week with I think the, oh we've got two shows actually till uh, No Way Out pay-per-view uh, but yeah join us next week thanks bye peace <laughs> do the white boy bye and wave <laughs> bye my Eugene <laughs> Right. You're very, yeah. very much children's TV presenter there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a good Bye. time. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> We're really glad that you're our friend. <laughs> <laughs>